what is happening guys here I have <coughs> x58 motherboard paired with a Xeon 6 core 12 thread processor um, and I just wanted to show you guys settings that I run and I'm overclocking the Xeon um, so this is MS board by MSI and in this bias we just have to go to cell menu to access all the overclocking setting and uh, let, let's see let's go over all of them CPU specifications so we have x5675 CPU here um, I run 24 gigabyte of uh, RAM and I overclock that too a little bit and then um, so yeah let's go ahead and go inside the CPU feature menu here we have um, two settings that I adjusted so uh, Intel EIST I enabled that and then C states I disabled C states however I do have C1E um, state en enabled that helps to downclock the CPU frequency down when the CPU is not used and you also have these two settings here um, just uh, redundancy I suppose um, turbo boost I enabled uh, turbo boost uh, this is a B clock frequency essentially and um, I have it at 178 I had it before at 180 but it wasn't stable so I had to lower it um, and as you can see we have multiplier of 23 there on top and uh, 178 times 23 gives us 4.09 gigahertz however we do have turbo boost enabled and that will boost um, CPU up to 4.46 gigahertz and then we have so yeah there is that that's just a basic frequency for the CPU and um, these CPUs are on up to 4.5 gigahertz stably um, more than that it depends on um, silicon lottery pretty much so um, memory I do have timings on auto However, I changed the memory ratio here, and I have it on five, which gives me um, seven, 1,780 megahertz on memory. And since it's a x58 uh, platform, we run um, triple channel memory on this motherboard. So <coughs> you would just essentially have to multiply, multiply uh, 1780 by 3 and you will get a total throughput of the system of the RAM and then QPI configuration I have this setting on full speed and this setting is minimum on 4.8 um, I didn't change anything in here PCI frequency is everything on auto this is just a default value um, we droop control so here um, I changed it to low um, CPU voltage um, and MSI board has this as um, an offset and I set it to 0 0.25 volts and that will give me 1.39 1 1.4 1.41 volts um, and then CPU PLL voltage is 1.84 volts QPI voltage I set it to 1.31 and uh, this is worth noting that if you do if you set this for then more than 1.35 your um, CPU will degrade faster so this is a very safe setting and it works for me and DRAM voltage I have at 1.55
Um, all these settings are on auto and I enabled spread spectrum. So this is essentially for um, for a situation where you work in the heavy indus in industrial environment where you have a, no a lot of interference going on or if you say like uh, you put your cell phone next to your CPU so that could cause some interference probably and so this setting enabled will protect your CPU from that interference. So I just keep it on, on enabled. However, a lot of people run it on disabled and it just works fine, fine for them. All right, and so I'm just gonna save and exit and we'll load Windows here and we'll run some tests. In my opinion, this is the best the best value for money as well as the best combo on the used market out there at this point um, you get six cores 12 threads processor you get triple channel memory um, I just used use the six sticks of uh, four gigabyte RAM and um, it runs great uh, as you will see in the tests also, um, they have some Xeons that are um, faster. So um, there is X5680, I believe, or M90. And um, those are not, so for those, the TDP, um, thermal design power, is um, greater. It's 130 watt, and uh, with for this CPU X5675, um, the TDP is 95 watt, I believe. So that gives a much better option to overclock. So let's uh, just run Cyanobench, and uh, I run R15 here, and we'll see what's the score. And I see we are boosting up to 4.463 gigahertz. And multiplier is in, on 25 here. Um, so yeah. And we're almost done there. Sign a bench score. Voltage is 1.408 volt. Um, yeah, so we got 987, um, which is uh, one of the lower um, scores. I will used to be able to get uh, 1000, 1021 um, on this one, and. Uh, one test that we will run is going to be user benchmark. Um, so let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see here. And let's see what user bench benchmark ha uh, tells us. I coupled the CPU with a GTX 1060 6 gigabyte. Um, also, I have SSD. 240 gigabyte SSD and also one terabyte hard drive for the system and I'm pretty excited this is just a great value for money the system is uh, is able to run all of the modern games um, at 1080p um, high settings ultra settings it will run it it will run it just fine um, the top CPUs that I would match with this uh, I'm sorry the top GPU that I would match with this CPU would be um, GTX 1070 um, because if you go to a GTX 1080 um, this CPU is probably gonna start bottlenecking but I mean it's a 6 core 12 threads it will um, how it will do really nice job if you want to do some light 
video editing, um, if you want to play games, if you want to stream on Twitch, uh, this computer will um, will be perfect for that as well. Just one uh, note here is that for um, streaming on Twitch, you would want to have a GTX, NVIDIA GTX video card because um, it has NV encoder that is really important to use for the Twitch streaming. Um, so yeah, this is a great system and I'm really excited about it, this one. We're almost done there on our user benchmark. Oh man, you see him. So, um, um, we get uh, gaming at 58%, desktop at 68%, and workstation at 59%. And uh, going down here, obviously our processor is uh, performing way above expectations. Um, so right here we have 74.5%. And uh, the 100% one would be i9 9900k so we are 74 percent of that um gtx 1060 we are running 58.7 percent um and ram here runs at 58.9 percent and the average bench for ram is 47 so we are really good on ram too we're performing way below expectations on ram on the CPU and on GPU as well. So great. Um, thank you guys for watching. Um, hopefully this is gonna be helpful information for you guys there.